Welcome back to Synthesis MedEd. This is the Bite Size Biochem section. I'm Dr. M, and today we're going to be covering triglyceride and fatty acid synthesis and breakdown. So today we're going to be building on the lessons that we learned in the acetyl-CoA video. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly suggest you go back and do that now, as that video lays the foundation for today's lesson. Recall that acetyl-CoA is the two-carbon molecule which is ultimately provided by glucose, and it is what is actually fed into the TCA cycle. Also remember that it's not the CoA part that's important, it's this two-carbon acetyl group. So basically you can think of acetyl groups as fuel for the TCA cycle. And in the human body, when we have excess fuel, we package that for storage. The overview of this process is that we take two-carbon acetyl groups package them into fatty acids, and to package this fuel even further, we take three fatty acids and link them together to make a triglyceride. Then later, when the fuel is needed for use, we do the opposite processes, freeing up the acetyl groups and feeding them into the TCA cycle to make ATP and get energy. The process of packaging acetyl groups into fatty acids is known as fatty acid synthesis, and the process of breaking the fatty acids back down into acetyl groups is known as beta oxidation. Now keep in mind, all of these reactions are fairly complicated, and in order to keep this bite-sized, we're not going to be covering things like the location of these reactions in the cell, enzymes, reaction intermediates and cofactors, reaction mechanisms, or the energy input required to carry these reactions out. But what I will emphasize is when it comes to tissues and organs, these reactions mainly occur in the liver and in the adipocytes, also known as fat cells. So we start with a 2-carbon acetyl-CoA. Then we take another 2-carbon acetyl-CoA and insert that into the first molecule, and we now have a 4-carbon molecule. You can now see that our molecule has a reactive end and a hydrocarbon tail, which is not reactive. By continually inserting 2-carbon acetyl groups behind this reactive end of the molecule, we can start growing the hydrocarbon tail. Eventually, we end up with a molecule with 16 carbons in its tail. The CoA is removed and replaced with a carboxyl group, and we now have a 16-carbon carboxylic acid. And this is a fatty acid. In other words, a fatty acid is a carboxylic acid with a hydrocarbon tail. Now, every fatty acid will have a unique name depending on how many carbons are in its tail and if or where any double bonds are present in the hydrocarbon tail. Now, from OCHEM, remember that carboxylic acids end in IC, this particular fatty acid is known as palmitic acid, but because it exists in the body in its deprotonated form, we call it palmitate. In order to package fatty acids further for storage, we take three of them and tie them together into a bundle. Now the rope that we're going to use to tie these three fatty acids together is a three-carbon sugar called glycerol. Notice that this sugar has three hydroxyl groups, and therefore it's a triol sugar. Each fatty acid is attached to the glycerol by linking the carboxylic group of the fatty acid to the hydroxyl group of the glycerol. In the process, one molecule of oxygen and two molecules of hydrogen are lost as a water molecule. And this is why it's called a dehydration reaction. So we link three fatty acids to the glycerol molecule. Remember that anytime a molecule becomes a substituent of another molecule, the name gets changed to end in YL. When a fatty acid becomes a substituent, it is called an acyl group. And this sounds very similar to acetyl group. Keep your term straight though. An acetyl group is a two carbon molecule which we use as fuel in the TCA cycle and which these fatty acids are chock full of. An acyl group is a fatty acid that is being linked as a substituent to another molecule. So in this molecule, we have three acyl groups being linked to a glycerol molecule. And therefore, we call this molecule a triacyl glyceride, sometimes also referred to simply as a triglyceride. And triglycerides are mainly going to be stored in the adipocytes. So now let's fast forward and see what happens when we need to release this fuel for use. When we attached a fatty acid to the glycerol molecule, we took out a molecule of water and that was called the dehydration reaction. In order to release a fatty acid from the glycerol, we do the opposite, which is utilize a molecule of water to break a bond. 
and that's called a hydrolysis reaction. So we hydrolyze each one of these fatty acids from the glycerol molecule in order to release them. We then replace an oxygen in the carboxylic group of the fatty acid with a CoA molecule in order to make it more reactive. We then oxidize the beta carbon of this molecule. Now, if you don't recall, one way to name the carbons in a fatty acid is by using Greek letters, starting at the carbon next to the carbonyl carbon. So the carbon next to the carbonyl carbon is the alpha carbon, and we are oxidizing the beta carbon. That's why the process of fatty acid breakdown is called beta oxidation. With the beta carbon now oxidized into a carbonyl group, we can now break this bond, which releases a two-carbon acetyl-CoA molecule. And this acetyl-CoA can now be used as fuel and be fed directly into the TCA cycle for energy. Another CoA molecule comes in to cap the end of this molecule and keep it reactive, and we can continue stripping off two-carbon acetyl-CoAs every turn of beta oxidation until this molecule is completely broken down. And that wraps up today's bite-sized biochem segment on fatty acid synthesis and breakdown. As always, thanks for tuning in, and remember, don't aim to memorize, aim to understand so that you can then apply what you've learned. See you next time.